السلام عليكم ورحمة الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره First I would like to congratulate Imam of our time and all of you and all the believers for the happy occasion of the birth anniversary of Imam Zainul Abedin alayhi salam. <laughs> and I hope inshallah we will all be given in this night and the day of Eid a sense of new appreciation of this great blessing of Allah which has been given us in the person of Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam. Still, I don't think we know how much we have been blessed by the life example of Imam Zainul Abidin and the great treasure that he has left for us. If we just had Sahifiyya Sajjadiyya, it was enough to be proud. Because no other faith community has something like Sahifiyya Sajjadiyya. And it is not all the du'as of Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam. Sahifah is just a collection. There are much more. <coughs> Some of uh, ulama have tried to collect from different libraries in the world all the du'as and all the works related to Imam Sajjad alayhi salam, and they have managed to find 50 volumes. And inshallah, they are going to gradually publish this. So there's a great legacy that left by Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam, and we need still to introduce this you know, to ourselves and to others, benefit from them, especially in the time that people suffer from emotional problems, from moral problems, from different kinds of anxiety, depression. These du'as are the best medicine and the best prevention. So tonight, I thought, as a reminder, let us reflect on Munajatur Rajin, the whispered prayer of Imam Sajjad, which is especially related to the people who want to appear. Your hope means that you have gone to wrong direction. There is no way that we move towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without hope. And this is why one of the greatest sins is to be despaired from mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because someone who is despaired is just a prey for shaitan. Someone who is despaired, shaitan can do whatever he wants with them. But if you are moving towards Allah, you must always have hope. And actually, your hope is the greatest means, the greatest capital that you have. Through hope, 
you can get more than your actions. But the actions are conditions for having a genuine hope. So if you don't have hope, it's a problem. If you don't have actions and you have a hope, again, this is also a problem because this is not a genuine hope. Someone who doesn't do anything and just says, I have hope. A farmer who doesn't do anything with preparation of the soil, with sowing the seeds, you know, looking after the farm, and says, I have hope that I have, will have a very good harvest. This hope is not genuine. So you should do your work, but your work is never enough to achieve what you need for your eternal happiness. Your work is just a sign of your honesty. But our hope is in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not in our work. Okay? Just we need to do something so that we can say we are serious. We are not, you know, just cheating. So actions are conditions for hope being genuine. Amir al Muminin alayhi salam said, Don't be one of those people who have hope in the hereafter and happiness in the hereafter without action. And this postpones tawbah because of unrealistic desires and dreams. He said, I'm going to do, inshallah, great things later. Inshallah, before I die, you know, I will become one of the righteous people. Just delays without reason. So, hope is a sign of being alive spiritually, being on the right track. Now, let us reflect quickly on this beautiful monajat of those who have hope. And you see how Imam Zain al Abidin alayhi salam <laughs> strikes a balance between being very intimate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but at the same time, very polite, very respectful. Because in dua, we have to be very polite. Yeah, we cannot, you know, na'udhu billah, you know, uh, demand as a person who, you know, has some right over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and question him and complain to him. No, we need to be respectful, but at the same time, we have to find a way how we can be very close and very intimate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Yaman iza sa'alahu abdun a'ta. O the one that whenever his servant asks him, he gives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes gives just by asking. In dua of Mansaf Rajab, after Salat, you used to recite every day. Ya man yu'ti man sa'ala. This is different from ya man yu'ti al-kathira bil qali. Sometimes Allah gives a lot in return to a little that you do. Sometimes he just gives question. Ya man yu'ti man lam yas'alhu wa man lam ya'rifu. So there are three types. One is he gives in return to what you have brought, but in a generous way. Second is that he gives just by asking. The third is that he gives even without asking. Because he knows you need. Okay? So, those who are very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in their du'as, they go through the middle way. Do you know why? 
Because not to ask is not polite. You should ask, even for salt of your food, you should ask Allah. Yeah? Allah said to Musa, even ask me for the salt of your food. If I don't ask, it's a kind of arrogance. I need to ask. But those who are very close to Allah, they don't see any value in their actions. Therefore, they say, give me because I'm asking, not because I have brought something. Okay? In dua of months of Rajab, also say, A'atani bi mas'alati iyyak. Not because of qalil that I have brought. Just because I'm asking you. I don't see any value in what I have brought. So, Imam is entering from the gate of asking. Su'al. Ya man idha sa'allahu abdun a'atah. وَإِذَا أَمَّلَ مَا عِنْدَهُ بَلَّغَهُ مُنَا Oh, the one that whenever a servant asks him, he grants. You need just to be honest in asking. You must really want this. You must show that you appreciate this. Otherwise, there is no way that you ask. And he would not give you either what you asked... Or if it is not your masla, something better. No way you ask Allah for something and he would disappoint. Man du'a, ijab. If you ask him, certainly he will give you. But either he gives the same thing sooner or later, or he gives you something better if that's not masla. This is the equation. Remember this, okay? Either he gives the same thing sooner or later, or if it's not masla, he gives you something better. On the day of judgment, people say, we wish none of our du'as for worldly things were accepted. Because we see what we have received now is much better. Okay? So, there is no way you ask him and he would not give. So, Imam says, oh, the one that I can describe him by this. You know, sometimes a person randomly does something. Sometimes a person, for example, often does something, but not always. But sometimes a person has this habit that does something all the time to the extent that people can describe him in this way, know him in this way. If someone asks you, who is your Lord? You don't say something that you know, randomly happens or, you know, even often happens. We say our Lord is the one that whoever asks him, he gives. This is our understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ud'uni astajib So we can talk to him as someone that whenever his servant asks him, he gives. And whenever people have hope in what he has, he will make them reach their desires. He will give them what they want. Because for a generous, honorable person to disappoint people is a kind of embarrassment. person who is Karim, if you go to his door and you say, you know, I have heard you have this character of being Karim. I have come from my city all the way to your door because I heard you are Karim. Do you think that Karim then says, what have you brought for me? If you are really at least understanding what is Karim, inshallah you are all Karim, so you know. But at least if you go to your fetra, you see that a Karim is never going to question. What have you brought for me? Who said you should come here? You have gone to the wrong address. No, this is not Karim. Karim says, this person has come all the way to my door with hope. I can never, you know, disappoint him. 
And even if he doesn't have, you know, to give you exactly what you want, he gives whatever is available and then apologizes. Says, please forgive me that, you know, I cannot give everything because I don't have. But if you can wait, I will try to borrow, to get from someone and give you. This is Karim. So for Karim, you don't need to take any gift, any payment. Just go to Karim and say, I have come here with hope. Then Karim cannot reject you and feels that you have a right over him. Yeah? Hope makes a right for you with Kari. Just hope. This is why in our du'as and munajat, you know, like du'a Abu Hamza, etc., so much we emphasize on hope. Qara'atu baba rahmatika biyadir raja'i. Oh Allah, I have knocked the door of your mercy with the hand of hope. If with the hand of hope you knock the door of Allah, the door will be opened. It's impossible to be closed. So, then Imam says, وَإِذَا أَقْبَلَ عَلَيْهِ غَرَّبَهُ وَأَدْنَاهُ Oh, the one that not only gives to his servant when he asks, not only gives him what he hopes, but when someone goes towards him, he brings him closer to himself. Karim doesn't give you, you know, what you want at the door or said, you know, something with his servant. Karim says, now come inside, let us, you know, have a tea together, relax, have a little rest. If you like, you can stay here for a few days. You have come long journey. When you go to Allah for your haja, not only he gives you haja, he says, now you can be closer to me. And this is the beauty of some of the problems that we have. Sometimes we don't need that this is a blessing because many times we don't go to Allah unless we have problems. Yeah? If we don't have any problem, we forget him. When we have problems, we go to him. But what we get is more than solving our problem. We get a better and closer relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you can understand the changes that you are going through when you have suffering, then you would think that, alhamdulillah, because of this problem, I managed to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? So the problem takes you to Allah, but then you find something better than what you wanted, and that is to be closer to Him. So, إِذَا أَقْبَلَ عَلَيْهِ قَرَّبَهُ وَأَدْنَاهُ Whoever goes towards him, he brings him closer. وَإِذَا جَاهَرَهُ بِالْعِسْيَانِ But if, God forbid, نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ Someone goes wrong direction. Instead of going to Allah and asking for help, he wants to try another path. He thinks I can be successful by na'udhu billah, disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me listen to shaitan. I can be more successful. Unfortunately, some of us, sometimes, you know, we listen to shaitan. We think na'udhu billah, shaitan, is more clever maybe, or you know, more you know, wanting our interest than Allah. We listen to shaitan. Although we are all convinced that shaitan doesn't have anything good to offer, but we obey shaitan. This is a problem. We shouldn't only think about Adam, alayhi salam, who listened to shaitan. We, 
also sometimes listen to shaitan. But those who listen to shaitan, sometimes at least they do it without anyone understanding. This is not a kind of you know, excuse. This cannot solve all the problem, but at least it's better not to disobey in public, not to disobey in front of others, not to be proud of your disobedience. Keep it between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because then if you disobey in public, this is not disobedience, this is now rebellion against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? But what does Allah do with the people who disobey and even rebel against him? Would he consider them as an enemy and says, you know, now I have to get rid of them? No. Allah considers them as a person that belongs to his house. It's my family. Like a child who has been deceived by bad people. You don't consider your child as an enemy. Even if the child is not listening to you, even if the child is you know, rebelling against you, you think, my child, I should bring him back. Okay? So, when the servant, Jahran, publicly disobeys him, he would just cover his sin because he doesn't want other people to know that this person has gone to wrong direction. Doesn't want to damage the reputation of this person. Hopefully, in future, he wants to have a decent life. He is not careful. He doesn't bother. He's publicly disobeying Allah. But as much as possible, Allah says, I want to cover. If someone is approaching Allah through tawakkul, tawakkul is a great means, a great spiritual tool. And when you do tawakkul, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes to your side. And he says, let me now sort out your problem. In Surah Talaq, Allah says, Man yatawakkal ala Allah, fahuwa hasbu. It's amazing. Man yatawakkal ala Allah, fahuwa hasbu. He's sufficient. Because sometimes people help us, but not you know, to the maximum they can. They just help us a little. Or maybe they do to the maximum they can, but how much power they have. They cannot solve the problem, even if they try hard. But when Allah says, I help, he completes the job. He finishes the job. So Nasr, which means help, when it comes from Allah, leads to Nusra, to victory. It's impossible that Allah helps you 50%. Either he doesn't help, or if he helps, he completes the job. So if you do tawakkul, then ahsabahu wa kafa, he would be sufficient. He would deal with this issue in the way that you don't need to ask anyone else to help. Okay? For hospitality. And you refused to host him. Is there anyone in any part of the world, in any century, 
able to say that I went to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asked him, you know, to provide me with shelter. Let me come to your house. And he said, no. Actually, he has declared everywhere, come to me. We unfortunately don't go. Otherwise, Imam Zainullah says, who is the one who went to your house and asked for your hospitality and you refused? Man alladhi anakha bi baabika murtajiyan nadaak fama awlayta. Who is the one who managed to reach your door asking for your generosity, for your gift, and you didn't give? Ayahsunu an arja'a an baabika bil khaybat masrufa. Now that I know you have these habits, these characteristics, you don't disappoint anyone. You don't even fight people who rebel against you. Anyone who comes to you, you welcome. Now, ayahsuno, is this good that I come to you and then you disappoint me? It's not possible. So I should be hopeful. This is a kind of reasoning that you are talking to Allah, but indeed you are convincing yourself. Yeah? Through this reasoning, you want to know what Allah's answer is. If Allah has been like this with everyone, I am not an exception. I should go to him and I will receive the same Treatment. Valastu arefu seva ka maulan bil ehsan and mausufa. How can then I come to you and you refuse to welcome me while I don't know any master who is known to be kind like you? I only know you as Mohsen. Ya Mohsen. I don't have anyone else. This is what makes Karim even more eager to help you when he is the only one who can help. Imagine if there are 10 people who are Karim in the city. So if one of them finds it difficult to help, at least says maybe other people can help him. Okay? Although Karim never, you know, says go to someone else. But if he's, you know, I don't know, ill, he has problem, etc., may say, okay, there are other people that can help him. They are also Karim like me. They are not going to disappoint. But if there is only one Karim, doesn't say this is your problem that I am the only Karim. He says, it's my problem that I am the only Karim. I have to then help you. I cannot send you anywhere else. Only a small part of it comes down to us. Everything is according to a known measure. But he has unlimited treasure. A way to make the equation better in your favor. You should understand what opens the gate of knowledge or wisdom or rezq more. Otherwise he has no limitation. 
And no one else is able to supply. He's the only supplier. Al khayru kulluhu biyadik. All khayr is in your hand. Wa kayfa uammilu siwaak wal khalqu wal amru lak. How can I have hope in someone else while creation and commands are all in your hand? Whether it is generation, whether it's gener legislation, all is in your hand. Or whether it is creation of material things and immaterial things, all are in your hands. Or oh Allah, shall I stop my hope while you have given me from your favor what even was not asked by me? Many things Allah has given us without us asking. Even before you were born, Allah blessed you with many things. When you were a child, before you open your tongue, Allah blessed you with many things. Even now that you understand, there are many things you have been given, and many problems are you know, kept away from you without you asking. <laughs> Imam Zainul Abidin says, I don't know, should I be more grateful for those blessings that you have given me, or for those problems that you have kept away from me? You only see part of it, and still you cannot thank. How many problems could happen to you that Allah kept away, but you don't understand? Okay? So when he has been giving us without us even asking, then how can we stop having hope in him? Are you going to make me needy so that I ask other people, I ask human beings like me, while I am holding on to your rope? Oh, the one that whoever has made qasd, whoever has just made niyyah of going to him has become fortunate and blessed. And those who have asked for forgiveness, they have never suffered from his anger, from calamities. Just istighfar. He made istighfar a way to get rid of the burdens of the sins. Kaifa an saak walam tazal zakari. How can I forget you? And you've always been remembering me. If you have a good friend that always you know, remembers you, whenever he's with other people, talks about you, he has a picture of you in front of him, he gives you a call every day. How can you forget such a good friend? Allah is always remembering us. If we are good people in front of his angels, he's proud of us. And then how can we forget him? And how can I be heedless while you are always watching me? I want to be always holding on to your karam, your generosity, and I am opening my hand to receive your gift. One of the best things you give me, make me a true servant, a true muwahid. I don't want any trace of shirk, whether in aqidah, whether in practice, any hidden shirk to be in me. Please make me one of the chosen servants of you. You know, now that you are with Allah, first you ask, please open the door. Please let me in. But then Imam shows that, you know, you have to be ambitious. You say, now please make me one of the chosen ones. <laughs> you have, you know, this is the way that you can work with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First you were... Asking for entrance, now you say, I don't want to leave. I want to be with you and be one of the people who are always with you. This is the beauty. And then Imam alayhi salam continues, but 
I think my time is over. So I hope we get this gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that inshallah we will make more time available and Allah gives us more tawfiq to know Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam. And reflect on his du'as carefully, meditate, and try to, inshallah, apply to our life. I promise you that you are not going to regret if you spend your time on Sahih Sajjati. If you reflect on du'as of Imam Zainul Abidin. It just will make you more and more successful in your family life, in your business life, in every aspect of your life. May inshallah Imam of our time be pleased with us. May Imam of our time be including us among the people that he prays for them and ask Allah for their success, for their tawfiq, for their nearness to him. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this night of Eid for shifa of all people who are ill. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for rahmah and maghfirah for all mu'mineen and mu'minat who have passed away. And in a particular way, those who have rights upon us. Our parents, for parents, our teachers, our marajah, our martyrs, our ulama. May Allah let them be with Muhammad and all the Muhammad. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant hajat of all people. We humbly request Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help all the people who are oppressed. And in particular, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Palestine. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make a peaceful solution for them before coming of the months of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant their children a new joyful life. May Allah inshallah make Muslim Ummah and all those who believe in God united so that they can face all the darkness and injustice in the world. Amin Ya Rabbil Alamin. Thank you so much, Sheikh, for that enlightening talk. Please, can we now welcome Brother Ali Jawad and his son Taha Hansraj with a salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad.